So we're going to chapter 8, price elasticity of demand. We're talking about price elasticity of demand. The elasticity there means responsiveness. Something has happened. So it's either it's expanding or contracting. So, so for price elasticity of demand, I wrote, it is a degree of responsiveness between the quantity demanded of a product as a result of a change in price. So that means something has happened in the market. Price has increased. And consumers have to respond to this price change. So how they respond, with the way they respond, is what we call price elasticity. Are they buying more or they, start, they stop buying? So that is, why, that is what we need to understand about elasticity. Do you get price elasticity of demand there? So for price elasticity of demand, it could be either, either elastic or inelastic. So we're starting with inelastic. So the, if the PED is inelastic, it means that there's no significant change in the quantity demanded of a product as a result of a change in price. So it is the, uh, the demand for that product is price inelastic, which means whatever increase in the price, whatever changes in the price, consumers will still buy. Not like it's going to be so glaring that they're not buying anymore. So that's why we call it inelastic. There's no significant change in the quantity demanded of a product as a result of a change in price. Do you understand PED inelastic there? So we have the graph here. So there's an increase in price from P1 to P2. And look at the quantity demand. It does not increase more from Q1. It doesn't change from Q1 to Q2. The significance here is not much. It's not that much. Slight change. Yeah, it's slight change. So here, an increase in the quantity demanded. This, this is inelastic. It's inelastic because the price has changed from P1 to P2. But the quantity changed. The quantity demanded change from just Q1 to Q2, which is just slight. So the change in the graph does not so much, it's not, it's not much. So this is what we call inelastic demand. So demand for such product is price inelastic. I think it's clear. Then we go to elastic itself. For elastic, it means that there's a significant change in the quantity demanded of a product as a result of a change in price. There's a significant change. The change is so clear. So we have a graph for that too. An increase in price from P1 to P2, an increase in price from P1 to P2 reduces the quantity demanded from Q1 to Q2. So look at the quantity now. It's so large. So this is a, there is a significant change in the quantity demanded here. So that means it is elastic. Do you get it? So for an elastic demand, it is price elastic if the quantity demanded, if the quantity demanded redu reduces significantly or increases significantly as a result of a change in price. But here we're talking about an increase in price. And based on the law of demand, the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded, right? So there's an increase in price from P1 to P2 here, which means the quantity demanded will fall from Q1 to Q2. So here, when you look at it, there's a significant change in the quantity demanded, which is more than here, which is just a slight, slight change. change. So a slight change is in, in elastic, and a bigger change like this, or flatter one is elastic. Is it clear? Yeah. So we go to calculating elasticity or price elasticity of demand. So to calculate price elasticity of demand, the formula is percentage change in the quantity demanded over percentage change in price. So for our percentage change in quantity demanded, it is Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 over P1. So which means, it's a derivative, which means Q1 is our origi the original quantity. Q2 is the change in the quantity. P1 is the original price. P2 is the change in price because elasticity is about changes. Do you get it? So it is the change minus the original divided by the original, divided by yes, the sir. change. The old value, of, uh, old value minus new value over old new value. New value minus old value divided by old yes. value. Is it clear? Yes. So this is the derivative. I think it's clear. Yes. So that takes us to the interpretation of the PED. So for the interpretation of the PED, we have PED greater than one. If PED is greater than one, if PED sorry, if PED is less than one, it is inelastic like the first one we showed, if it is greater than 1, it is elastic. That means it, if it's from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9, it is inelastic. If it's, from, if it's more than 1, if it is more than 1, it is elastic. If it is 0, it is perfectly inelastic. If it is to infinity, like 4, 5, 6, to infinity, it is perfectly yeah. elastic. Then if, it is, if the P is equals to minus 1, it is unitary. I think it's clear. Yeah. Any question about that? So PED... PED less than one, inelastic, greater than one, elastic, zero, perfectly inelastic, to infinity, perfectly elastic, minus one, unitary. Then we'll move on. 
So we go to pi as t and the shape of the curve. So the vertical, the vertical demand, if it's vertical, it means it is inelastic. You get that? There's no change. In, there's no significant change in the quantity demanded. But if it is flatter, that means there's what it's elastic. That means there's a significant, significant change in the quantity demanded. I think it's clear. Clear. Great. So we move on. So we're going to the factors that influences the PED. Are you there? Are you here with me? Factors that influences the PED. I explained that. Yeah, we move on. Yeah, great. So the first one we're going to talk about is availability of substitute. When we talk about availability of substitute, we're talking about goods that are. Good